Sutra, I now say this, world honored one, Buddha, who has revealed the Saha world. In this land, the true substance of teaching resides in hearing the sounds purely. If one wants to attain samadhi, hearing is the best way to enter. Commentary at this point, Manju Sri Bodhisattva has finished speaking about the various Dharma doors by which the sages were certified. He continues, I now say this, world honored one, Buddha, who has revealed the Saha world. In this land, the true substance of teaching resides in hearing the sounds purely. In this world, which is able to be born, where the Buddha has compassionately become manifest, the genuine method for teaching and transforming living beings is in the purity of sound. That refers to the Dharma door of returning the hearing to hear the self-nature. If one wants to attain samadhi, hearing is the best way to enter. The skill of returning the hearing to hear the self-nature is actually the most wonderful, the best method. Sutra, apart from suffering, liberation is found. How excellent is he who contemplates the world's self? Commentary, apart from suffering, liberation is found. One can separate from suffering and attain liberation. Separating from suffering is just liberation. Liberation is just leaving suffering behind. How excellent is he who contemplates the world's self? Ah, the Dhamma door of Kuan Shri Bodhisattva is so fine. Sutra, throughout compass as numerous as Genji's sense, he enters Buddha lands as many as fine dust moods, obtaining great power of self-mastery. He bestows fearlessness on living beings. Commentary, why does he praise Kuan Shin? Throughout compass as numerous as Genji's sense, he enters Buddha lands as many as fine dust moods, during that many ends, Kuan Shri Bodhisattva goes to countless Buddha lands, as numerous as fine most of dust. Obtaining great power of self-mastery, he bestows fearlessness on living beings with spiritual power and great ease. He causes living beings not to be afraid. Sutra, wonderful is the sound of Kuan Shri, a pure sound like the ocean roar. He saves the world and brings peace to all within it. He has transcended the world and his attainment is eternal. Commentary Wonderful is the sound of Kuan Shin. Kuan Yin Bodhisattva is extremely miraculous, a pure sound like the ocean's roar. His pure and clear sound is like the thunder of the sea, a single, all pervasive sound. He saves the world and brings peace to all within it. He rescues those in the world so that all living beings attain peace and contentment. He has transcended the world and his attainment is eternal. He transcends the world and attains the everlasting enlightenment. He realizes eternal, indestructible, comfortable spiritual powers. Sutra, I now make this report first come one regarding what Kuan Yin has just explained. It is like someone in a quiet place when drums are rolled throughout the ten directions, hearing at once the sounds from all ten places. This then is the actual true perfection. Commentary I now make this report first come one regarding what Kuan Yin has just explained about his experience with perfect penetration. It is like someone in a quiet place when drums are rolled throughout the ten directions. Hearing at once the sounds from all ten places. In every one of the ten directions, drums are beaten simultaneously. Although the drum sounds come from ten places, the one person in the quiet room can hear them all at the same time. This then is the actual true perfection. This nature is genuinely perfect. Sutra The eyes cannot see through solid forms. Mouth and nose are much the same. The body registers awareness only through contact, tangled in thoughts, the mind lacks clear connections. Commentary The eyes cannot see through solid forms. The eyes here are not the Buddha eye, the wisdom eye, the Dharma eye, the heavenly eye, or the flesh eye, nor the five eyes. What is referred to here are our ordinary physical eyes. 
These eyes can only see within boundaries. They cannot see through and beyond them. They cannot see through solid objects. For instance, if we close the windows and pull the blinds, we can't see what is outside. Even in perceiving what is close to us, a single layer, a single layer of skin prohibits our seeing. For instance, we cannot see what is inside our bodies with the ordinary eyes. The eyes of a sage are different, a different matter. But here we are discussing the capacity of ordinary eyes. They can't even see, even see through a thin piece of paper. Also, when they look into, look to the right, they cannot see to the left, and when they look to the left, they cannot see what's on the right. Mouth and nose are much the same. Between breaths, there's a hesitation where no air enters or leaves the nose, and the tongue must have some flavor in order to experience the taste. Without something to taste, it doesn't function. It's two, then are more or less like the eyes. The body registers awareness only through contact. The body must come in contact with objects of touch. For sensation to be experienced, and so it is not complete in itself either. Tangled in thoughts, the mind lacks clear connections. The mind's thoughts are random and confused, without any order to them, and so they are not best for perfect penetration either. Sutra sounds can be heard even through solid walls. That one can hear can listen to things both near and far. None of the other five organs can match this. It then is penetration true and real. Commentary with the organ of the ear. Sounds can be heard even through solid walls. You can hear what is going on beyond beyond a wall. One can listen to things both near and far. None of the other five organs can match this. The eyes, nose, tongue, body, and mind are not as effective as the ear. It is more perfect than any of them. Its function is perfectly fused. And unobstructed, the others cannot compare to it. It then is penetration true and real. The other five sense organs do not have this kind of genuine penetration. Sutra: The nature of sounds is based in movement and stillness. One hears according to whether there is sound. With no sound, there is said to be no hearing. But this does not mean that the hearing has no nature. Commentary. The nature of sounds is based in movement and stillness. Sometimes there are sounds. Sometimes there is no sound. When there is no sound, there is stillness. One hears according to whether there is sound. Hearing perceives the movement of sound and the stillness of no sound. With no sound, there is said to be no hearing. That's what we say. But this does not mean that the hearing has no nature. The nature of hearing is definitely, definitely not distinguished. When we say there's no hearing, the nature of hearing is in fact not absent. So try in the absence of sound, the nature is not gone, nor does it arise in the presence of sound. Entirely beyond production and extinction, it is then truly everlasting. Commentary: In the absence of sound, the nature is not gone. The absence of sound. Does not mean the nature of hearing has ceased to be. Nor does it arise in the presence of sound. When a sound is heard, there is no change in the nature of hearing. Entirely beyond production and extinction, it is then truly everlasting. It is complete in itself and divorced from production and extinction. Birth and death become perfectly fused. The nature of hearing is an everlasting. Unchanging nature, not subject to production and extinction. Sutra, ever present, even in dream thinking, it does not disappear when cognitions and thought are gone. Enlightened, this contemplation transcends cognition, reaching beyond both the body and the mind. Commentary in the presence of sound, in the absence of sound, of the arising of sound. And at the cessation of sound, the nature of hearing never ceases to be. People may realize this in an ordinary waking state, but is also ever present, even in dream thinking. 
Someone sleeping soundly may hear the sounds of beating clothes and bounding rides as a drum and bell being struck. This proves that hearing is present even in dreams. It does not disappear when conditions and thought are gone. It is not like the mind which doesn't exist without thoughts. Enlightened, this contemplation transcends cognition. The enlightened contemplation is the hearing nature goes beyond thought, reaching beyond both the body and the mind. The body and mind cannot compare to the hearing nature of the organ of the ear. Sutra, now in the Saha world, the theory of sounds has been proclaimed and understood. Sutra, living beings are confused about the source of hearing. They follow sounds and so they turn and flow. Ananda's power to remember was exceptional. Nonetheless, he fell prey to a devil plot. Was it not from hitting sounds that he was nearly lost by turning back the flow? One will make no such mistake. Commentary Now in the Saha world, the theory of sounds has been proclaimed and understood. Living beings are confused about the source of hearing. They don't understand the inherent hearing nature. They flow south, they follow south, and so they turn and flow. They cannot turn the hearing back to hear the self nature. They seek outside, they listen outside, they pursue the south and run outside. If one allows the ear to race out after south, instead of returning the hearing, one gets caught up in the flow of birth and death. It is also a knot. There is birth and death, and so there is a knot. And it all starts because you pursue the defiling objects of sound. You can't bring it all back. Ananda's power to remember was exceptional. Ananda was always erudite and had a brilliant memory. He could recite by heart all the sutras in the Chipitaka. Nonetheless, he fell prey to a devil blot. He was smart that he couldn't avoid the difficulty brought about by Mantanji's daughter and the former Brahma Heaven Mantra. He was captured by a Devon drama of an externalist religion. Was it not from heating sounds that he was nearly lost? By turning back the flow, one will make no such mistake. If you can turn the hearing back and hear yourself nature, then naturally you will not succumb to any falseness. You won't err like that. The reason Ananda was susceptible to the deception was that he was always seeking outside. He studied this and studied that and was proficient with one sutra and another, but he never returned the light and illumined within. He never stopped to think about how he should act or what he was doing. All he did was study. He studied so much that he forgot what he was all about. That reminds me of the answer Confucius gave when someone came to ask him, Is there anyone in the world like? The question began, Like what? asked Confucius. Someone who moves, taking everyone with him, all the relatives in the household except his wife, he forgets to take along his wife. Could there be such a person? What do you suppose Confucius answered? Did Confucius say it was impossible for a person to, to forget his wife? Or that it was not impossible? Confucius said, nowadays, people even forget themselves. Not only could they forget their wives, they could even forget their own bodies. The meaning was that they don't remember that in the future, their bodies will die. They forget they will have to go through old age, sickness, and death. Since Ananda concentrated on studying things external to himself and on developing his scholastic abilities, he neglected his samadhi power. Since he neglected samadhi, he didn't know how to develop the skill of turning the hearing back to hear the self-nature, and so he pursued sounds. He did not make the sounds follow his self-nature, and so he got caught up in the difficulty with Mantaji's daughter. Sutra, Ananda, you should listen attentively. I rely upon the Buddha's awesome power in describing 
to you the Vera King, a somebody inconceivable, a blackness to illusions. It is the true mother of all Buddhas. Commentary, when Manjushri Bodhisattva had spoken thus far, he called out to Ananda. He was a drama prince with long-standing status, while Ananda was comparatively young. Here, Manjushri Bodhisattva is representing Shakyamuni Buddha in speaking the drama, and so he gets Ananda's attention. You should listen attentively. Pay attention. Listen to every word. Don't be the least bit casual. Don't sit there half asleep while I am speaking this verse. You should understand that this verse I am speaking is not my own ideas. It is spoken by the power of the Buddha was has invested in me. The Buddha indicated that I should speak and express this intent. He told me to select the Dharma for your sake. You shouldn't think that it is I, Manjushri Bodhisattva, who is telling you this. It is the Buddha speaking for you. Now do you understand? In describing to you the Vara King on the Buddha's behalf, I will explain the Dharma door of the Vara King. The Samadhi inconceivable lack of likeness to illusions. It is the true mother of all Buddhas. This Dharma is cultivated without cultivating. One cultivates and yet one is not cultivating. Not cultivating, one still cultivates. It is rather like putting on a play and yet at the same time it's real. That's the wonder of it. You can't imagine how subtle and wonderful this Dharma door is. You cannot conceive of it nor express in it in words. It is the mother of all Buddhas. Every Buddha is born from this Samadhi, so pay attention. Do you want to become a Buddha? If so, you have to keep your mind on what I'm saying. And then you have to develop the skill through actual practice. Don't just spend your efforts on superficial skills. You have to attain some internal Kung Fu.